Hi, I'm Bob with Big League Lawns, and today we're going to go over a new installation video for the Toro front wheel drive uh, recycler mower. Uh, these models range uh, in age from 2012 up until uh, the date of this video, which approximately 2020, um, and we wouldn't anticipate any new changes um, either in the near future. Uh, you're going to find that this mount today that we're going to show you um, is nearly identical to most mounts that we typically use for the checkmate lawn striping kit here in the back um, with the one exception that in on this particular mount we have to the only thing unique i guess we would say about it is is that this has an axle bolt and we're going to take toro's axle bolt out and we're going to replace it with a new part that we're going to supply with you in your kit and it's extremely important uh, for us we want to show you those steps first prior to actually starting the step-by-step -step installation because we have to make absolutely certain that the roller is able to freely float up and down. So at this point, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do um, in order to show you how it's currently installed is we want to remove the bagger so that we can expose where our uh, pivot arms from the checkmate actually come up and connect to the uh, Toro itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that out of the way. Here you're going to find that the checkmate itself is sitting right behind the roller. It's a, it's a beautiful fit in terms of it fits right in between the tires and it's nice and tight tucked up against the machine. That helps the mower itself pivot so much nicer uh, when we've got the roller itself mounted close to the machine. Here again you can see that it has free floating action. These things weigh at least, they're 20-21 20, pounds in terms of solid injection molded rubber and then of course the heavy gauge steel that we use. The, what, the important part of, us, of the demonstration today is for us to show you how this L bracket not only connects to the checkmate itself but more importantly right up in this area here this is where your new pivot bolt is going, going to install. It's a direct thread, there's no drilling. Uh, you're going to pull one, uh, the existing axle bolt out. We're going to put a new axle bolt in, but the order of which uh, we install the washers um, is going to be critically important so that we don't pinch this arm against this black wheel height adjustment lever. So we're going to show you that step by step. So at this point in time, now that you've got a look kind of at, at, at what the end result is, it's time for us to go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and take this apart, put the Toro back to the OEM manufacturer specs, um, disassemble the arms from the roller, and then we're gonna walk you right back through step-by-step step with the uh, installation. Okay, so at this point in time, you can see that we have um, already uh, went ahead and we have disassembled or removed the checkmate striping kit from the Toro uh, front wheel drive recycler. Um, this is exactly what you should expect on Toro side in terms of when you buy the machine. Um, we literally lifted this out of the box and onto the table. So this is exactly the way that it's packaged, right to its manufacturer spec. So we're going to go ahead and remove the bagger and get that out of the way. And that will also help us just to leave it out of the way and, and also leaving the handlebars forward. It's going to free this whole area up so that we can give you a better shot in terms of what needs to be done to install the check beam itself. A word about the checkmate or a couple of things I'd like to point out to you regarding the checkmate. Um, it, is, it is manufactured actually for commercial use but we sell um, just a ton of these obviously for homeowners use that want that same ball field look in their front and backyard. Um, each one of these individual rollers spins individually. Um, they have what we would call a DuPont manufactured nylon bushing. They are what we call an injection molded rubber, which means that's a hot liquid rubber that gets poured into a uh, mold. It hardens and it comes back out. They're treaded. Um, they're, they're extremely durable. In other words, I guess what, what I'm trying to get to is this will last a lifetime. Um, also in the box, you're going to find a hardware pack. And in the hardware pack, you're going to find the two mounting arms, that's all it's going to take to connect between the gray channel and the mower itself. And then you're going to find a variety of uh, washers. Um, you're going to find a quarter inch uh, hex key uh, for tightening down your new pivot bolts. And these here are your two new pivot bolts which we're going to put in through the tires. So we're going to remove Toro's OEM and use ours, they're a bit longer. And then you just have a series of half inch washers that are going to 
uh, be mounted in this in the process so that we again I mentioned earlier so that these arms don't rub against or don't get pinched against the um, um, the wheel height adjustment bracket itself. In terms of tools, the only thing you need is a three quarter inch wrench and a half inch socket. And the socket, obviously you don't need an extension on it, any half inch socket will do, but that half inch is going to help us to uh, remove the Toro tires. So at this point in time, um, it would be good if you found any object. I've just I've got an old paper tool tube here, and what I'm gonna do, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna lift the mower up because I wanna get the wheels off the ground. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and lift this and now I've got both wheels off the ground and I'm just going to go ahead and come around here and reverse very quickly. These will be in somewhat tight. But I'm just going to go ahead and take out one side for you real quick. You're going to find that Toro puts a little tiny washer on the inside, on, on the bolt, on the inside. Um, we're going to set this as well as Toro's axle bolt. We're going to set that aside. And I'm just going to describe for you very quickly because they do look a little bit different, but they say they um, serve the same purpose. This is an axle bolt. It has a smooth shaft on it um, for the uh, tire to rotate on. This is actually called a shoulder bolt. They both have the same similar threads. This one's got a little bit longer shank on it. It makes room for our, our arm to pivot. And um, other than that, there's no difference between the bolts except for the head. The head of an axle bolt um, uses a uh, socket style to release it. And um, this is where your quarter inch wrench comes into play for tightening down your new, your new bolt which will secure your tire back to the mower itself. Okay, so we're ready to get started by mounting our first. We're, we're gonna start on the right side. Um, now that we've got the tire off, you can see that this is your wheel height adjustment bracket. And obviously, as you move that back and forth, it adjusts the overall, it adjusts the height of the, of the wheel. Um, this is exactly where we, we just pulled the um, Toro's axle bolt out of. It has 3 8 threads, and we're gonna supply you with a shoulder bolt that also has 3 8 threads. So this is, it's nice because it's a uh, no drill application. Um, I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do an extra step here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the arm together first without the wheel on so that you can see the importance of where we place our washers and exactly how they have to sit up on top of the, sho of the shoulder bolt um, so that we don't pinch the arm. The whole, the whole point of this or the concept is to keep those arms freely floating so the full weight of that roller is on the turf at all times, regardless if you're going uphill, downhill, or whatnot, the roller can freely pivot it at all times. Okay, so at this point in time, we're gonna get ready to go ahead and install um, um, one of our L brackets, but before we do this, just for the sake of clarity, this is obviously we're, we're kind of cutting out a step. Typically, of, of course, we would, we would put the a washer on, um, and then we would go ahead and put our wheel on and we would then put our bracket on. But for the sake of clarity, so that you can see the importance of keeping this arm free to rock up and down, I'm gonna take the wheel off and just show you an example very quickly of what it is that we're trying to achieve. So with this washer, this is gonna be on the outside of the wheel. Just bear with me here. There's gonna be a second washer, and this washer is going to basically butt up against the inside white portion of your wheel hub. So your wheel hub's gonna be here. And then our L, our L bracket is going to come onto the shoulder itself. And then we're gonna put one more washer. This is the critical washer that we're talking about right here. This washer, once, once this is threaded in here, this washer cannot be sitting on the threads. It needs to be up on the shoulder. It is extremely critical. It cannot, and I will show you. I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this in. You can see that the washer is on the threads. If I tighten this down, and um, it, you can see here that the washer is pinched, and the what we would call the shoulder, the, the, the part that ends with the smooth shank and turns into the threads, 
that shoulder, what's, what's important here is that shoulder needs to butt up tight against this silver framing. We can't have a washer stuck in between. So the ultimate goal here is to bring this up and it get, it's gonna obviously be a little bit trickier. I mean, it's nothing too difficult, but you can see here, you can see now, see how it, it's totally tight against the machine. And we, of course, would tighten this down. And just for the sake of clarity, this is gonna go here, this is gonna get pushed there, there, and your wheel hub fits right in here. So at this point in time, we are, we are free to float up and down at all times. The bracket will never be in a locked position. Okay, so at this point, I'll take this back out and we'll reinstall the wheel. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel now this time. So we're gonna start with our, um, our uh, shoulder bolt. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a half inch. This has a half inch shank. We're gonna put a half inch washer on it. And then holding it, I'm gonna go ahead and take the tire and make sure obviously you get the tire, the outside of the tire on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna install this. You now can see that this is the portion that I was previously talking about where our um, pivot arm is going to rotate up and down. Um, only for the sake of just making sure that we don't have metal rubbing against your plastic, we're gonna go ahead and put a, another half inch washer on. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the arm itself on. And this is where it starts to become a little bit trickier because it's just a little bit difficult to hold all of these pieces but this is where we then put our last washer on. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and let it set on there right now. I'm not gonna get too um, upset that my washer is currently on the threads. I'm gonna fix that um, later on. But the first thing I wanna do is I need, just need to get this threaded into this hole. And once I have it threaded, things are gonna become a lot easier to, to work with. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put this in here. And I'm not, again, I'm not worried about what's happening right now in terms of the threads. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to begin to use my Allen key and I'm starting to thread this in. And before I get too far, I wanna lift that washer just like that. It's lifted, I'm hoping you can see the gap, but that inside washer is up on top of the shoulder. And I'm just gonna use my other hand and I'm gonna tighten that against the frame and I'm gonna lock your tire right back down, nice and tight. This tire is now right back to the OEM specs, and the Checkmate pivot arm is free to move up and down. Okay, so we've got our first bracket clearly installed, ready to go. Um, this is ready to be attached to the gray channel. Um, you can see here, this is the axle bolt that we took out of the Toro Recycler. Um, we're done with our wrench until we get ready to take the back left side off. The parts remaining would obviously be the back left arm, the back left uh, shoulder bolt, the washers, and the key. Um, the next thing I want to show you very quickly, and I'm going to show you um, out here where we can see it visually, is I'm going to ask uh, for our camera to come in a little bit closer. But the, on the checkmate itself, we ship, and we intentionally do this, we ship your, the connecting bolt. It's a very heavy half inch uh, by one inch bolt that connects the bracket to the gray channel. And I wanna show you very quickly because sometimes people get a little bit confused by these. These are torqued just a little bit tight. Sometimes you, sometimes you can untighten them, but we put them, we, we, we torque them down just enough so that for shipping purposes, they don't come out. So you're just gonna take your three quarter inch wrench and you're going to go ahead and remove the, the bolts and you see there that there's also another lock washer this being half inch and what I want to go over very quickly is this this nut this nut is free to float it can slide up and down this is how we're able to to mount it basically any motor on the market is because this nut allows us to meet the frame width of wherever these two L brackets wherever the L brackets come out then we slide these in uh, unison so that they can uh, be bolted right back in place. In the event this nut were to come out, they are spring-loaded. Uh, let me turn this. I'm gonna push down, pull it out, and show you that it's nothing more than a spring. And you'll see that it has rounded edges on this side and on the back side, which means that when you go to put it in, if you were to ever have to put, take it out, 
push down and turn it uh, clockwise and it locks right back into the channel. So at this point in time, I'm gonna go ahead actually and um, I'll go ahead and show you the left side. That has, it has to come out anyways. But once we have the left arm installed, um, then it, the left arm itself would be installed identical to what we just did in the front on the front right side. That arm is going to come down and it's going to sit and you may have to adjust where exactly that channel nut is. Again, if you push down on it, you can slide it back and forth. But how it goes together is you just simply line up the hole, take your one inch bolt, your half, excuse me, it's a half inch by one inch bolt. Put your lock washer on, slide it through the bracket. It, it, it found the channel nut immediately. And this, once we tighten this down, is how we secure the L bracket to the gray channel. Okay, so at this point in time, we've gone ahead and taken the uh, liberty of, of taking the let back left wheel off, installing the back left arm, just as we did on the front right side. It's identical. Um, you actually just repeat the step, step by step, as earlier described. Um, at this point in time too, I want to go ahead and put the mower itself, get the wheels back down on the ground, just so I have more stable surface than working off, off this, uh, this tube that's currently in the machine. So I'm going to safely lift the mower, set it back down, and uh, just set this up to the side. And we're getting to the final stages here. So we, we need to take our arm, and we're going to go ahead and take our um, half inch by one inch uh, hex bolt. We're going to put our washer on there and it's going to go through the top and now we just bring our checkmate up we look for the threads in the channel nut which we just showed you and sometimes you know it, it's never you know it, it certainly is a one-man job but if you have uh, somebody who can stabilize things for you someone who can hold a part or just hold the roller so it's not moving it does make um, things go much quicker and a whole lot smoother obviously we do this on a daily basis so um, for us, it's a bit more natural. So I'm gonna go ahead, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt through. I'm gonna take it back down, and I can already see that my channel nut needs to be pushed out. And I'm not sure if you were able to see that in the picture, but I just pushed the gray channel, the channel nut. I just pushed it out towards the gray end cap. So at this point in time, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the roller itself is centered. Um, I can see visually that the uh, L comes down and it's right at the end of the gray cap on both sides. So just by the nature of uh, setting this up, it's already centered. So I now have to take my three quarter inch wrench and I have to take my time, um, but I want to make sure that this L bracket stays square or flush um, with the channel itself. We don't want the bracket to turn on us or, or to be crooked. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this. And I can feel it pulling together at this point. And maybe one more last turn. You can't really over torque it. And I'll go ahead and I'll do the same thing with this side as well. Torque that down nice and tight. And the last thing that we do, what we always do, is we make sure that the kit is functioning properly. Again, it's a heavy, fully weighted, just out of the material, out of the construction itself. We want to make sure that the roller is free to float. It will never shift left or right. It will always follow the contour of the back wheels, which is a beautiful privilege when you're making corners or especially when you're backing up. The roller doesn't twist on you or hit the tires in any way. So at this point in time, um, if you would like to, to, you could go ahead and grab your bagger and we could go ahead and lift the uh, bagger or the, or the rear discharge door. Set your bagger back in and you can see that we now have a complete install of the Checkmate striping kit on the Toro front wheel drive recycler. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you have any questions at all, we have a great support staff here to help you out. 
Uh, you can call us at 1-800-411-0150 uh, uh, or uh, email us at sales at biglegalons.com. Um, we're here all the time to help you out in any way that we can. And uh, we wish you the best of luck with your new striping kit. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.